I mean, my I started with the internet uh, in 1993, and uh, at that time I brought the internet to Lebanon uh, when the war was ravaging the country. Uh, 15 years of war, civil war during that period, and. Uh, uh, the first node was uh, at AUB, the American University of Beirut. It was based on UCP uh, over TCPIP over X25. Not the most friendly uh, environment, but it worked. Uh, soon after, we developed the, the LBDR, which is the Lebanese Domain Registry, and the first Lebanese Academic and Research Network node and offered uh, services to the community, free services to the community. We gave them um, accounts, uh, uh, access to internet services, and training, uh, mainly the uh, academic and research community in the country, and the ministries and government agencies. Uh, and at that time, the services that we offered for the community were uh, TNS, mail, uh, FTP, news, and the Gopher servers. Soon after, we offered the web uh, web server and uh, we offered a peering network where the various entities connected to that node that became the de facto IX in the country. And everything was done in pro bono and uh, in an ad hoc mode by volunteers. I believe that uh, the main, the main uh, difficulties that we faced other than being in a war zone uh, it's the uh, it's the government. I mean, the monopoly of the government telecom, and the lack of complete infrastructure. The infra telecom infrastructure, electricity, everything was completely destroyed in 15 years of war. Uh, all that topped by a political system that is most of the time in in I mean crisis mode, if not completely blocked uh, or in a deadlock situation. Uh, so that really was the most difficult part to deal with. Uh, the aha moment, uh, I believe that the aha moment was when I realized that if you offer services in an ad hoc mode, in a pro bono mode, uh, this will confuse the establishment and uh, neutralize uh, the regulations. So they will not be able to identify who is doing what. Uh, and uh, the services, I mean, in that way, the services are owned by the community receiving the service. So if that community is large enough uh, to become influential, uh, you establish uh, some sort of uh, de facto situation that is rooted and it flourish. I believe that I was lucky to have a great mentor, uh, Sami Cortas. Uh, uh, I was initially a biomedical engineer, so we started from that field, both of us. And uh, I mean, as everybody, we need a protector. I had also a great protector, George Tommy. Uh, both of them was in the American University of Beirut, offered me uh, an, an open uh, environment where I was able to develop, uh, get training and grow and offer services to other pro bono. So you need to have a structure around you that will somehow give you the, the playground to be able to do that. I mean, the internet is considered by many as being the force industrial revolution. Uh, I believe that it went way beyond that. I mean, I mean it, it went way beyond the in industrial revolution. Uh, with the, uh, with the f I mean, uh, the, uh, <coughs> Uh, blockchain, uh, 3D printing, uh, artificial intelligence, IoT. Uh, the the internet is disrupting the industrial structures, and uh, I believe that combined uh, they would kind of shift the economic, the global economical uh, model. Uh, they will uh, redefine education, redefine public health, redefine industries. I mean, large number of industries. Uh, so, I mean, it's a revolution by itself. Uh, I, I cannot call it industrial because it's going, in my perception, it's going to disrupt the industrial clusters around the globe. It, it's, going to, it's going to destroy uh, or replace, I mean, I don't like to say destroy, replace that model of uh, cheap labor 
uh, by moving it to individual. What will we call it? I don't know. <coughs> uh, so the internet, uh, I mean, the way it changed and disrupted and redefined uh, communication and uh, publishing and uh, the news distributions and the social life of people, it's going to do the same for the, uh, in the, in the industrial field. The internet is going to uh, surprise us by lots of changes. Uh, we need to adapt to them, align them, and protect, and make sure that we're protecting the neutrality. Uh, we're protecting the growth that is englobing, rather than being specifically by small entities, being a government, or a company, or a corporate, to, make it, to keep it the way it is today, spread all over at multiple layers of, I mean, countries, economies, uh, financial capabilities, and so on. So this is very important. I mean, it's just to, to keep it uh, neutral and open. I mean, when I went in 1993 to Stanford, I was looking for a technical environment, for a technical solution. And I came back with a people solution. I came back with, uh, with uh, another book of friends of colleagues who are ready to assist free of charge, offer their time, their expertise. And that was not very, very common, especially if you're coming from an industrial or commercial environment, even in an academic environment. So it, it was the openness and the friendship among the, the core community that, uh, that surprised me. And actually, it gave me the drive all through my life to do the same, to offer the services to whoever needs support. Uh, and this is very fulfilling. The most important is that the innovation is still alive. And the innovation is going to keep on driving the internet. Uh, I mean, we did not dream on, of what we have today in 1993 or 1992. And we cannot dream of what will come later. I mean, I believe that each and every individual that is connected is bringing in some new life into the internet. Uh, it is not anymore a technology. It's a lifestyle. It, is, it covers everything from social, from social interactions to economics to uh, technical. I mean, it covers every, everything. What is, I mean, <coughs> the concern that I have is that government seems to be trying to take control over the internet. And whenever they, if they are able to do so, uh, they would block that innovation spirit. I mean, government are not to known to be agile, and um, they, they have security concerns, and rightfully so in some areas. Uh, uh, they have uh, power control. I mean, they would like to preserve the power. What is that monster behind us where everybody is doing whatever he wants to do? Uh, but I don't believe that they're going to be able to, to go back, to, to turn the clock back, and go back to the all telephony setup and the fax setup and security setup that they, they would like to have. It is way beyond their capacity to uh, put on leash the people who's using it. It's not anymore a technology, it's people. I would like it to, I would like to see the digital divide decreasing, uh, narrowing and that the internet would reach to people who are less fortunate and bring their quality of life to higher standards, uh, better health, better education, uh, better agricultural environment. I mean, we're going to need of the better environment as a whole. Uh, and the internet has the cap capability to do so because it's narrowing distances, bringing knowledge all over. Uh, wherever you are with a, s a small iPhone today, you can search and say, okay, I need drink drinking water and I have a pond. How can I transfer that pond into making it a drinking water? You didn't have that capability, those capabilities before. So this is what I love about the internet. It is to make knowledge more in, in, the, in the hand of those who need it and in a timely manner and for free.